Are you looking to buy a compact TYM tractor but not confident enough because you don't know enough about the product or the company? Then come along with me as I do a service on this one and give you all the pros and cons. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. So I bought this TYM compact tractor back about three years ago, and I bought it on the back of a YouTuber by the name of Tony from Tony's Tractors. Now he did say that the machines are very solidly built, they have a strong frame, good motors, and just operate really well. But the problem is that this was my first tractor and I damaged it. I gave it some really harsh treatment and it just came back smiling at me. And so I've bent a lot of bars, I've damaged a lot of things, and just recently I damaged the grill and also the ray radiator and I did make a video on how I repaired the radiator and I will put a link below if you're interested to see that. So this model is a T273 which basically means that it's a 27 horsepower uh, and it runs on a Mitsubishi motor and it has the LT250 4-in-1 bucket as an attachment. So TYM is a Korean based company and in more recent times they bought out Branson so the company is growing and their product range is increasing. So Inlon is the distributor for Australia and slowly growing the network but I've got to tell you straight off the bat that Sydney being a city uh, they don't have very good distributors around this area but I do know that they have good distributors around Australia in regional areas. So the tractor is coming up for a service now so today I'm going to show you how I grease and oil it and just fix up some of those parts that I've damaged. So I have ordered the parts, they've all come in, uh, and I'm gonna replace everything and put everything back the way it was originally. But first of all, I need to take the machine outside and give this machine a good clean. So first I'm gonna spray on the greaser, uh, just to make this a bit easier to clean. So I'm basically just spraying over the areas where there's a lot of grease and oil, uh, so I can re-grease this machine. So now I'll just let that sit for a bit, and then I'll just wash it off with a gurney. Okay, so the tractor's now dried and it cleaned up nicely. So I thought while I'm still out here, uh, I might actually first try to straighten up this bar on the bucket so it is bent. Um, so I put a couple of slings through the pipe and uh, just connected it to the back of the tree. So just on the base of the tree where it has the most amount of strength, uh, bolted them together. And so now I'm just gonna gently uh, reverse back and see if I can straighten out that bar. Looks like I'm gonna to have to put a bit more force into it. So I'll just tilt the bucket at the same angle. Okay, just rev this up a bit. Might have to take a run up. Okay, it's actually not looking too bad. Uh, a lot better. All right, so I can still do a bit more of uh, manipulating using a fencing bar. Uh, so now I'll take it into the shed and do the servicing. Okay, there's a lot to do, so I'll get straight into it. Uh, you know you're getting serious when you roll your sleeves up and it's time to roll my sleeves up. I'm also gonna put some gloves on. Okay, so from that angle, you can see the bend there. Um, so I'm gonna just try a little bit more with this fencing bar. To see if I can straighten it out a little bit more. 
Okay, so that's a little bit better. Still got a little bit of a chicane happening here, but it's a lot straighter, so I'll just leave it as that. This section also broke off uh, a while back, and it's uh, supposed to be sitting in this position here where the knuckle joint is, uh, and it sit, fits through this bracket. Now, I won't be welding it today, but I do hope to weld it in the future. Uh, what needs to happen is the whole bucket needs to come off the machine. Um, you don't weld anything that's on the machine. Uh, not only will you damage the battery, but uh, there's hydraulic oil here. Uh, and there's a risk of actually uh, catching a light. So it's best to take it off the machine. In fact, a while back, my seat broke and I had to take that out and I arc welded it and then I fit it back in. As I said, it's a much safer way to do it. So one of the biggest things I learned about tractors uh, through the vibration is that everything comes loose. And so there's nuts and bolts in this tractor that have come loose and I let them go for a bit, not knowing what was happening. Uh, and in one section, it damaged a filter because it was, uh, the chassis was starting to move. So so uh, those need tightened regularly and I'm going to tighten them today. So if you are new to getting tractors, make sure you check all your nuts and bolts regularly. So these are the bolts here. So there's six of them and I can see this one is loose. Uh, so these three I have replaced. The black ones um, I haven't replaced. Look at that. It's really loose. <clears throat> make sure you tighten all of them. Okay, so this tractor has uh, the ability to put attachments. I do use a slasher and also a backhoe, um, and, um, and it's a 540 PTO. Now this uh, section, this arm has actually damaged, so I went and bought a, a brand new one. So this comes off quite easily. Um, there's just a pin here, a little bit difficult to access, but I'll just turn that around. There it is there. So basically straighten up that pin and just uh, pull it out. Okay. There we go, that pin came out fairly easily. Okay, so pull this pin out, that falls out. Now all we've got to do is just take this nut off here. Okay, so that pin's now out. Put this one back in. Okay, put the flat washer first, then the spring washer, and then the nut. So this needs readjusting to reach that length. All right, so that's about the length I need. So I'll just place that pin back in. Ugh. That's it. I'll just put the split pin in. There we go. And we'll just open that pin up so it doesn't open up itself, so it doesn't fall out. Okay. There we go. So I haven't done the final adjustment to this. I'll adjust it when I'm putting a, an attachment on. So now, you can see the heights here. This one here is roughly about probably two inches, about 50 mil higher than this point. So I'm gonna raise it by twisting this. So what we're gonna do is loosen this nut. And then I just turn this, I'm going clockwise here to raise that. Now, I don't want to go too high, so I will use a measuring tape here to make sure that these are right. So that one there comes to 455 mil, and that one there is 400, and that one there is 460 mil. So I'm just going to lower it back a bit. Okay, very sensitive. It actually falls very, very quickly. Yep, that's spot on. They're both the same height now. So that's been fixed again, woohoo! Okay, so now I just lock this nut back off so it doesn't uh, come loose again. There we go. So now this is gonna be really hard to show you. I'll have to move the tray just a little bit for now. Now the sump plug, uh, it's actually like two plugs. Uh, now the reason they do that is because you've got the shaft running in between uh, the sump. So just here, there's a shaft just there and that runs from the back uh, to the front. And so that shaft actually runs the four wheel drive. So the front wheels and the back wheels. And it goes through the differential system. <clears throat> so we have to do one at a time. So I'll just take out the first one and then I'll go on the other side and take out the other. So I'll just take that out. <clears throat> Let's see how hard that is. Yep, that's not a problem. I'll just do that and let that oil run through. Okay, so that's the first plug. That oil looks really dirty. 
Okay, now I'll just do the other side. Okay, there we go. Okay, so while the sump is draining, I'll change the oil filter. All right, that's out. Just put the new one on. Hope it's the right size. And it is beautiful. Okay. Now, when you do put the oil filters on, you never do them too tight. Okay, so the oil filter's now changed, and we've got a brand new one. Uh, and now I'll just put the sump plugs back into the sump. Okay, that one's on. I'll lock the other one off. Okay, so now I'll put some diesel oil in the motor. So it's a bit hard to get this dipstick in. Uh, it's just behind the oil filter. So you've got to get right inside and let's see what the reading is. Okay, that's pretty good. So the mark there full is just there and you can see it's just below. It's about 10 mil below. All right, I'll just put a touch more. Not right, so that'd be plenty. Okay, so I'll just check the oil one more time. Let's pull that out and beautiful. Just over the mark. Uh, so by the time the motor starts, it will fill up the oil filter and that will go back down again. Okay, so I was able to take the bonnet off. It was quite easy. Basically, it's just two 12 mil screws just in this position. Just use a ring spanner and it came off quite easily. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to take the remainder of the grill that's broken. So I'll just take them out there just to fill it with the screw. Okay, so this section of the grill has also popped out. I'm going to just pop it back in. Okay, all right, that's back in. And the other side also came out. I'm just gonna pop that one back in. Okay, and I've just taken these off the tractor. This is the broken part of the light. So now I'm gonna have to repair all this. Uh, this section here is the uh, TYM emblem, which I will put back on the new grill. Okay, there's a little rubber on here in the back of the grill holding that emblem in place and it's not going to come out until I pull that rubber out. So I'm going to just gently take that out and this should come straight out after that and yes it does. All right. Okay, so this is exciting, my new grill. Let's hope the emblem fits and yes it does. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to put the grill back. So you put it under this section here, swivel that on. I'm just going to do one section at a time. So I'll just put the front screws in. To the other side. And now I'll just do this section. Okay, just tighten them up. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the lights in, but I will have to repair the lights uh, with my U-Butte Rapid Fix glue. Okay, so this is the section that's broken away from the light. Now I can't use it until I repair it. So I'll just put some Rapid Fix. And the way this works, you just put a bit of glue and then you put some powder and then you put the glue back again. Okay, and then just hold that for a minute. Okay, so now I'll let it dry and now I'll just go around and put grease in all the joints. So it makes it so much easier when you clean or pressure clean all these joints to get all the dirt out so the grease gun can go right inside and you can load up the joints with the grease. There's a fair amount of grease points in this tractor. So you gotta go through and grease all of them. Okay, so you know you're full when you're pumping in and you've got grease coming out from the sides and you can see the grease just popped out in there. Alright, it's finished. 
Okay, so the glue's now dried. Uh, the rapid fix works fantastic. You can see the glue all welded around here. Um, there's also another section here. The bracket came off there. Uh, on this light, there was a bracket just here. You can see the weld just around there and a little bit around the side there. So now that's solid and ready to go back in. Um, I did discover actually the flat section that I used to put the logo, the TYM logo on the grill. In actual fact, uh, was to sit on this other bracket. I wasn't sure where that went. There is not enough information of these products and uh, and where everything goes. So I've worked it out and I've repaired that as well. That was broken up the top here, broken there and broken down the bottom. So I fixed it all up and it's working well. So now I'm ready to put this whole thing back together. Now I haven't shown you the full process on how to use Rapid Fix on this video, but I will put a link below of where I used it to fix my radiator. And uh, that's working brilliantly. This product is fantastic and I highly recommend it. So I'll just turn this around so you can see what's happening. Okay, so this is the light that fits down the bottom. Um, and also this cover came off, so I'll put the cover back just to save that light globe. This is the power connector. Okay, so basically this just sits on here like this. Okay, so you can either put this bracket on this way or this way. So if it goes this way, the screw holes are that way. If it goes this way, the screw holes are that way. So I've just discovered that it actually fits this way. So the flat section goes to the lower section. Okay. I'll just tighten that up. Okay, so that's in, and the TYM logo is in beautifully. Okay, so now I'll fit in the light. So you've got to get the right screw size, which is the small, and so I'll just sit that in place. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's have a look at that. Beautiful back to new. All right, so now I'll put the other one on. Okay, that's in. Okay, so I do have a plastic cover to go over this section as well. I've just got to find it. So now this is ready to go back on the tractor. It's looking pretty good, almost brand new. Okay, so this is going to be a little awkward um, because this is the screw hole just here and here and the 12 mil screw sits in this place when it's in position. Um, but the ring spanner is very tight. It's very hard to actually screw that off. Um, so they sit in this position here and this position in here. Now this one here is slightly bent, so I'm going to bend it back. Okay, so that's it. It's back in position. Pretty close. But the good thing about this bonnet, it's very lightweight. I'm not sure what it's made of. It feels like a plastic type fiberglass, um, but it is quite easy to, uh, to maneuver. So there is one more screw to go in from the light section into these sections here. So basically just four screws that hold this into place. Okay, so I'll just turn that around into position. Now the question is, can I reach, I might be able to reach those yeah, okay, so I think I know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to go around the other side. Okay, and I'm going to put a screw from here. Uh, where is it there? And just lift that up. Actually, not as hard as I thought it would be. Okay, I won't tighten that fully yet. I'll just do the other side. Okay, fantastic, I got it. All right. <clears throat> okay, so that's on, that's fantastic. Great. Okay, so now I'll, I'll just connect the light. Just put that in. And that one's connected, beautiful. All right, so now I'll just do the other side. Okay, that's in, got it. Okay. We're done. So the only thing I want to do now is just change the globes for the back brakes uh, and just make sure everything's working. Okay, so the light globe's just in the back here. All right, so I'll just put that back in. There we go. And now I'll just change this one. Okay, we're done. All right, we'll test the motor. Beautiful. Just put the handbrakes on. 
So this service went better than I expected it to, except for the bonnet, fixing it up. Uh, everything else is quite easy, and I'm very happy about that. As I said, there's no one here locally to service the machine, so I'm just learning how to do it myself. So if you want to see this tractor in action, I have two videos that I've made, uh, one with a backhoe and one with a slasher attachment. Uh, so the backhoe was the FHM. Now, I've got to say straight off the bat, uh, I wasn't very happy with that product. It was a cheap Chinese backhoe. Um, I should have actually bought the TYM uh, Baco, which is an attachment to the back and works off the pump, the hydraulic pump of this tractor. Uh, the other one has an independent pump and I've had a lot of issues with it. So I don't recommend that Baco at all. But the Slasher is a Dakin and it's a 1200 wide. It fits beautifully as an attachment to this tractor. Um, and I cut almost one meter high African love grass and it just chewed it up. It's a great little machine. And just a shout out to Mick and all the guys at Tractor Australia, which are local distributors in this area. And it's where I buy all my generic tractor parts from and they're just brilliant. So the big question is, if I had my time again, would I have bought a TYM tractor? And the answer is yes. It's a brilliant machine. I love it. It's very, very well built. And thanks to the guys at Inlon, and I hope this video helps them to build their network and distributorship in Australia. So if you are interested, I will put a link below for Inlon and all the other products I use today. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any comments at all, please leave them below and I will get back to you. And I'd ask you, please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share this video and there's many more to come. Thanks guys.